Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to review the Chin series, which is one of the actions within the famous Princeton offense. In this video, we will cover the spacing and setup, the chin cut, the flare screen or drift screen options, before wrapping up with how teams flow from chin into five out if there are no initial scoring options. To start, the Chin series starts with four guards along the perimeter. Two players are positioned in the slots, with two players positioned on the wings. The five man or post player starts on the strong side elbow. The action itself is initiated with a slot to slot pass. As the ball is swung to the wing, five will step up to set a back screen for the initial passer to chin cut to the rim, looking for an easy finish. This is the first scoring option within the chin series. While most traditional Princeton teams will swing the ball from the slot to the wing as the chin cut is taking place, this isn't always the case, especially in modern hybrid versions of the chin series where most teams are looking to get into a spread ball screen. Here you see Princeton make the pass to the cutter from the slot rather than swinging it to the wing beforehand. If the chin cut is not open, the cutter will continue through to the strong side corner. After setting the initial back screen, five will turn and set a flare screen for the player who initially swung the ball to the wing. This player's first option is to catch and shoot as they flare off five screen to the top of the key. If the defender goes under the flare or drift screen, they risk giving up the open catch and shoot three. If they chase over five screen, they risk giving up the curl to the basket, an option we will cover later in this video. The biggest key to creating space with the flare screen is walking the defender down towards the free throw line before flaring to the top of the key, like you see in this clip here. If there is no shot available off of the flare screen, the ball handler at the top of the key can look to attack the double gap on the opposite side of the floor. Attacking off of the flare or drift screen essentially mimics a middle ball screen, with five either rolling to the rim or popping to the top of the key, depending on their skill set. In this next clip, we see Furman run through the chin series before attacking off the flare screen. The defender chasing over the screen, combined with five rolling to the rim, creates a five on four advantage for the offense. The ball handler attacking the double gap and into space off the flare screen puts a ton of pressure on the defense. So if you have a five man who can shoot, Popping to the top of the key is a great option after setting the flare screen. The final flare screen option I wanted to discuss is curling to the rim, which I mentioned earlier in the video. If the defender attempts to overplay or fight over the top of the flare screen, the player can continue his cut and curl to the rim for a lob or easy finish. Now that we've covered the primary scoring options in the chin series, I wanted to show how teams flow into five out, which is something a lot of teams will do if the pass to the top of the key cannot be made. In this final clip, the player flaring to the top of the key is not open, so she continues to the weak side wing. The five man or post player then pops to the perimeter to receive the pass, creating the five out alignment. From here, a lot of teams will flow into some sort of cutting action, followed by a dribble handoff or ball screen. Well guys, there you have a super quick breakdown of the chin series. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for more basketball breakdowns.